I would like to present you my Forzau Chuck. And no, I didn't give it a name. It's one of these cheap Amazon Chucks. But for what I do with it, it's perfectly fine. To be able to mount it on the machine, I had to make this back plate that bolts on this back plate. There was no way for this chuck as is to bolt it directly on the original back plate. Which means that now there is an important distance between the workpiece here and the bearings of the spindle. And that is a big problem because it's a source of chatter. I think that was clear. If I could bring the chuck closer to the spindle bearing, there will be more support and will be, of course, more stable. So, let's take all this Zwick apart and see what we can do about it. And here it is, in pieces. If I measure the distance between the table, is of course the jaws, this on the table, yeah, and the resistor ring that goes on the spindle, here I have uh, uh, 160 millimeter, six inch and uh, something, uh, some change. On the tree jaw, it's 135, and that is five inch and some change. So almost one inch of difference between two. I think that's a lot. The ideal should be to make a new plate like this one that I can fix directly here on the forge jaw. But it's not really possible because my lathe cannot cut this thread here. If I remember well, it's a 4.5 mm pitch and my machine can't. It's a bit stupid having a lathe that cannot cut its own threads, but it is what it is. Okay, tree gel, you can move over here. Right. Adapting this plate, make it thinner, is not really an option because the thread engagement here is a bit less than 10 millimeters. And for the weight this thing has, I think it uh, doesn't need less than that. So, problem. I think I have an idea. Because there's a lot of meat left here, with all this surface, all this is useless weight. It's not really useless, but I mean, uh, it's more than strong enough. If I cut a recess here, deeper, and the chuck will register on this outer rim here, like this, I can go down at least the thickness that I have here, which is I think 15 millimeter, and that's also minus the thickness of the between two base plate I have, I think that might work. To cut out this center part, of course, I have to hold my part because my chuck suddenly becomes a part. I have to hold it in the lathe. My first idea was to use the between two plate, bolt it on the back plate and then bolt the chuck the other way around on this plate. But, there's a few problems with this system. 
first of all the four bolts will be in the way so that's not really an option problem number two the distance between the bearing and the surface I'm gonna work again is too large so chatter problem not a good idea plus because I'm not really good at having my dimensions spot on I need the I'm gonna take this away I need this plate I will need this back plate to do some test fits just to be sure that it works of course I think I found a solution if I make a taper like this one that fits here in the spindle of course not this one because it's a drill chuck but a, a new one put it in hold in place with the draw bar that could work no problem then I can forge out my forge out here in place on this uh, axle bar round thing that it's gonna be and it will be really easy to index it to have it nice and straight and center yeah second advantage is of course the holes and all this side will be free and I can use the center and put in some tail support I think that would work right let's uh, find some uh, materials and Go for it. To set the angle of the top slide, I installed my dead center here in the chuck, make it run true, of course, and then copied the angle with the dial indicator. I suppose that's not really rocket science, huh? or, or maybe just very simple little rockets. Right, let's cut a taper. It needs more speed. I think this one will make it in history as the ugliest taper I ever made. But whatever. Let's take it out of here and see if it fits. It doesn't look too bad. Touching more here than here. That feels good. You can see on camera, but I can see in real life, it's touching here and here for a large spot and here a little and here and here. Good enough. Oops.
Okay, let's break out the top wrench. Having all this nice equipment here and then tapping by hand. Hmm. That's primitive. Let's install. gonna have to change cutting tool because the carriage is gonna bump here in the headstock and I have to clean up this little piece left here I installed the truck and it runs at less than 10 microns of run out so I think that's really good because of course there is flex in this uh, shaft and in this center and you know, it will be impossible to have better installed my boring bar and the old thing is singing so I'm a bit afraid to have lots and lots of chatter but Let's witness together if it works or not. I think that's looking good. I will bring you back when I start reaching these uh, plugs things here because this could be fun. Before I started this project of course one of these in fact this one because you still see the mark on it I took it out and I gave it a touch with a file and it felt soft so I think no problem and now that I start cutting in it I see that in fact they're not that soft they're not really really hard but a little bit hard so this uh, is gonna be fun That hurt my ears. I gotta change the tool stick out here. You can see, but uh, there is a little bit too much stick out. I'm gonna shorten it and try again. You could clearly tell that the lathe and the insert were not very happy with the treatment I gave them but of course I didn't ask for their opinion and this one seems to work perfectly fine a little bit wiggle that will do right because this is the registering surface and not this one I have to cut a recess in here 4 mil deep and I think 115 <laughs> Be 
because of this shaft here is in the way, the only way I could come up with to take measurements is like this. Now, it's a bit sketchy and I'm pretty sure if Stefan in Germany watch this video, it will be the very last time he watches one of my videos. It looks like I have six tenths to go. The divider trick for measuring seems to work very well. Even so well that the fit is so perfect that I can't get out anymore. So let's use some violence. I hope it works. Hardly. There it goes. Of course I'm gonna rework a little bit to make it fit better. Maybe it's time to think about drilling the four holes to take these bolts. And to do that I installed the backplate here on the tackle. And to find the center I used a nice round thing here. This used to be a piece of an engine. And put it in a drill chuck of course and then find the four coordinates with a little piece of paper and moved. I check. Uh, 56 millimeter from the center. I don't know what steel this is, but it's hard stuff. I'm telling you. fits, you never know. Every time I have to make these bolt patterns on whatever kind of pattern, whatever kind of part, there's always at least one bolt that a little bit snug. I don't know why, but it always happens. But it seems to work. Escape. Three hundredths of a millimeter for the Imperials is just over one pow. I think for a four jaw. That will do. Time to do the tests. Same workpiece, same cutting tool, same depth of cut, almost uh, more or less, and same RPM as in the beginning. Let's see what happens. <laughs> still makes some chatter, but way less than in the beginning, that's for sure. Of course I need to play a little bit more with this new setup, but I think it looks promising. I'm convinced it was a good idea. The problem is now what to do with this thing. <laughs> 